Hi, I'm Forrest Tanaka, and today, once again, I'm going to show you a real client shoot. Uh, this case, it's going to be artwork, a uh, canvas painting, and I'm going to photograph it so that they can make prints from it. So, right away, you know, it's got to be exactly square, you know, no bowed, bowed lines, actually, and no angles. So, I'm going to show you about that. Another big issue, since we're photographing a painting, is color. The color has to be exactly right, and so I'm going to show you how I handle that. Uh, but the first thing I'll show you is the lighting setup, because that's kind of the hardest part to get right here. Um, if There are companies devoted to taking photos of artwork, and if you're making a lot of money from your prints, you should really go with them, because they've got all the equipment, scanners and incredible strip lighting, uh, to make the lighting <coughs> come out really good. But I'm going to do my best here with what I have, uh, with just a generic uh, lighting setup. I've got two strobes and uh, reflectors, so let me show you in more detail how that's going to work. So here's the artwork. I have it on the floor, and because I've got a carpet here, I have it sitting on a big, uh, I don't even know what this is called, like a fiber board, uh, just a hard surface, and then to reduce any color casts from reflected light. I've got this uh, black fleece uh, piece of cloth here. And there's the artwork here we're going to take. Really nice. Now, we have to get the lighting completely even across this whole painting. So, <clears throat> now we can't have flash on the camera over there because that's just going to reflect light directly back at the lens and you're going to end up with this big bright spot in the middle. So, we have to have the light coming off to the side, and I've got a couple lights here. <clears throat> the first one is this four, let's see, which one is this? Oh, this is the 430EX, and notice I have it flagged off right here. I don't want any light coming directly from the flash onto the painting. It's all going to be reflected off of this piece of foam core. And so it's arranged like this. And I have the exact same thing on the other side. And I have the foam core at an angle <coughs> to reflect back at the painting. So I have a 530, sorry, 580EX here. Again, flagged off so that no light goes directly from the flash onto the painting. It only goes onto the reflector here. And to trigger it, I've got a radio popper with an audio mono audio splitter to trigger the two flashes. See? And then for the camera. <clears throat> Using a 5D Mark II and with a long lens. This is a 70 to 200. Um, I'm just with this arrangement. I can't get too far back, so I'm not at a 200. Let's see, more like 100. Uh, maybe actually be less than that because I set this up for a smaller painting earlier. And so I've got the radio popper trigger here. The hot shoe actually broke. I think I mentioned that. Well, I'm not sure if I mentioned that or not. So I have it connected with a PC cord to the camera. And of course I've got the remote shutter release avoid touching the camera directly. And I'm out at, uh, oh, I don't know if you can see this, a uh, pretty, I'm at the maximum sync speed for this camera at 1 200th of a second. ISO 800 and a F8. So that'll give us a nice depth of field. And, um, oh, and the strobes, what are the strobes? They're pretty low power right now. We got it at 1 64th on the 580. And we've got 1 8 on the 430. The 430 is less powerful than the 180, or 580 rather. So uh, it always has to be set a lot higher. All right, so now we have the lighting that's even. The next thing we have to make sure of is the color. So uh, probably most of you know about setting the white point um, and using a white balance card. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna get real deeply into it. But uh, this is the x -Rite Sorry, x right color checker uh, passport and uh, it's about a hundred dollars US kind of surprising for a piece of plastic but that's because it has both 
a gray card for checking your white balance and it has these color chips and software that knows how to read it. So the first step is to get our white point set right so you have to make sure not to uh, touch these because your oils on your skin will tend to change the color of them if, over time. And anyway, you're, we're working with artwork here, so it's a good idea to have washed your hands before this with soap and water. So the first thing I'm going to do is get the uh, set the proper white point in camera by putting this right above the painting. So I took the camera off the tripod because I need to be up close to the uh, gray card. Um, Setting the custom white balance on a camera, at least on Canons, that uses the center area. Uh, so whatever's in that center area is what it keys off to make a custom white balance. So uh, need to get up close, and uh, but I need to make sure I'm not interfering with the lighting here. So here we go. And first of all, I'm gonna turn off these lights. And then take a shot. And I'm out of the way of the lighting. So here we go. So I put the gray card in the center. Ow. And let's see if I can show you how to set things up here. All right, there's our photo. I'm gonna go to the menu. Set a custom white balance. And that's the photo we want, so I'll hit the OK. And I already set the white balance to custom, and so you should be set. I'll take another shot just to verify. Again, turn off the lights. All right. So now we know we've got a good gray. Um, you can't really tell on the video, of course, but I know I have a good uh, white balance. Now we're gonna go to the other mode on the, uh, I'm getting the video here. Go to the, uh, the color chips on the, the uh, X-Rite Passport. So let's do that next. Okay, so that's the uh, gray card side. Now I'm gonna flip this around To go to the color chip side. Now what you do is you take a picture of the artwork along with this or actually you just take a picture of this initially and then you can take a picture of the artwork along with this. So the first thing I'm going to do is put this right where the painting is. Now one thing that's not really all that clear from the passport documentation is for the software your, your software is going to actually read your photo and find this, these color chips, and use that. But in order for the software to find it, it has to be arranged correctly. There is a right side up. It's not completely clear which way that is, but there's two panels here. One has all these different colors. Uh, these are skin tones. Oh, I just touched it. Skin tones, sky color, um, grass plant color, basically. And um, let's see, these are just common colors that come next. And here's a RGB, CMY, cyan, magenta, yellow, and then grays. And there's also grays in here. Uh, this part is to set though, these are basically little gray cards in, in these two rows. I should get closer. Huh? These are basically gray cards in these two rows, but with different kinds of grays. So these are a little more blue on this side, on the upper row. And that lets you warm up the tone if you wanted. And the bottom row, or I shouldn't say the bottom row, the third row is for landscapes, uh, which I'm not going to use. So anyway, I'll arrange this to sit right on top of the painting. And with, uh, oh, I forgot to mention, in order for the software to find it, you have to have the one with all the different colors on the bottom and the one with the three rows of gray on the top. Uh, if you have it arranged this way or this way, or this way. Uh, from my own experience, the software just can't find it. It has to be this way. And I wish the documentation made that clear, but there you go. 
All right, so I'm gonna take a shot of that. Okay, I've got the color chip side of the color passport there, so now I'm gonna take a shot of that. It has to take up a good amount, you know, a reasonable amount of the frame in order for the software to find it. So let me make sure the strobes are still working. Good. I'm gonna take a shot here of the color passport. Again, with all the lighting the way it's gonna be. And it's taking up a good amount of the frame. So here we go. All right. And if you can see that, there's the color checker. And so now I can just go on with the rest of the shoot. I don't need to go to um, uh, Lightroom right now. Uh, we can do all the color processing afterwards. We just have all the data we need to get good colors. And so I'm going to take the sh shots of the artwork itself. Okay, now you're looking at the back display of my camera. Let's first set the focus. There we go. And let's go to different areas where it's easier to focus. I'm using live view here. That makes focusing manually a lot easier. So there it is in focus. Now we need to frame it right. I need to zoom out and tilt here. I'm just barely fitting inside of this frame at this distance. There we go. And I can just barely see the gray. Let me go down a little here. Okay, actually up a little. Okay. So I'm going to move the camera back a little actually. Okay, and I have the grid turned on. The 5D Mark II has an optional grid you can turn on. So that'll help us align this so that it's as straight as possible. Okay, make sure we're not cutting out the bottom. Okay, so now we have the painting, the full painting, and also the color checker at the top. And so now I'm ready to take a shot. All right, now the camera set up, lighting set up, color checker set up, and the painting set up. So let us take that shot now. I'm gonna test the strobes. Okay, good. I'm gonna turn off the lights, make sure there's no stray light coming in. And here we go. All right, I have imported the photos into Lightroom, so let's take a look at what we have. So here's a photo of the uh, passport itself, the close-up shot I did. And so the next step is to have the color checker software make a color profile for this photo. And so the first thing I'll do is correct the white point. Now we set the white point earlier and so it should be very close but just to put the final uh, little tag on it now we can see 63.8 for red 64.3 for blue or green sorry 63.8 for blue so that's really close um, and let's look at this area again these two rows of the color checker if you see two of them have these notches and that's for neutral gray uh, the bottom Row is for uh, landscape, so this is neutral gray for landscape. This warms it up, this cools it down. And this upper row of grays is for portraits. And this is the neutral gray on the left. And as you uh, go to the right, you can see them, uh, hopefully in video, you can see them getting bluer and bluer. You can see the numbers, definitely. Our red is 62, green 66, and blue is 68. So you can tell this is bluer. So if you uh, use this one as a white point, that warms up portraits a little. If you use this as a white point, it makes portraits neutral. Now this is a painting, we need it neutral. So I'll click here. And again, since we set the white point earlier, it's already really close. All right, we'll go back to library mode. Now when you install the Passport software, it installs an export preset which is going to, rather than really exporting the photo, it's going to um, 
analyze the photo. It'll look for their passport uh, color chips and then make a profile based on that. So if we go here, you can right click and go to export and you can see XFIC presets. So color check your passport, we'll choose that. Now it'll ask us for a name, I'll just call it artwork 2012-01-15 and say save. Now this process is going to take quite a while so I'll fast forward to where it finishes. All right, the uh, passport software is done. It's given me this alert saying it's been generated successfully. It also says Lightroom must be restarted. Uh, the problem is Lightroom doesn't have a mechanism for these export presets to have it reload the um, color profiles. So right now in Lightroom 3, you have to restart it. Lightroom 4 has been announced uh, as of today's recording. Uh, and it's even in public beta, but uh, I don't know if it has a way to uh, automatically reload them. I hope so. We'll have to see. Uh, so I'll say OK. So we're back at the photo. The photo hasn't changed. Now I restarted Lightroom. And so let's go type D to go into develop mode. OK, and if we scroll to the bottom of the Lightroom panel here, for the color calibration, you'll see process is 2010. In Lightroom 3, 2010 is the current one. Uh, for Lightroom 4, it'll be called 2012. But the important part is the profile here. Adobe Standard, uh, that's the default. But if we open this menu, you can see artwork 2012-01-15, the one we just made with the uh, color checker passport. So if you look at the colored chips, look especially at the blue. It seems like blue is the most affected by changing color profiles. So I'm going to select this and there we go. And you'll see the blues darkened up. Now of course this applies to the entire photo and so you probably saw the blue of the painting change as well. So all right and so now we'll go and I'm going to back out to edit mode. I'm going to select this and the photo we just took and I'm going to synchronize them, which brings up the uh, synchronization. I'm going to check none. I'll copy the white balance and the calibration. So that'll copy the white balance I said earlier, as well as the calibration, the color profile I just made. We'll synchronize it. Now we'll go to the actual photo. Go to develop mode. So, as we look down color calibration, we'll see it has the same artwork, uh, same color profile called artwork. And so now we know the colors are correct. And so let's see, what I'm going to do now is zoom in. And I'm going to adjust the white point and black point of the photo. So I'm going to turn on the highlights for shadows and and the white clipping. And what the white clipping one will do is it'll turn anything that's pure white red. And so let's increase the exposure until this color chip here on the right turns red and we'll know that we've gone too far. And there it goes. So now we know we're clipping white. So we'll pull back until that's completely gone. There. I'll do the same for the black point. We'll use a black slider here. And this will turn blue when it turns pure black. Okay, let's turn on a little blue so we'll back off a little. There. All right, now we'll turn off those highlights and zoom out to the whole picture. And now this is the calibrated picture. So it should have exactly the right colors. Now, of course, being a painting here, we need to adjust its dimensions. Uh, so first I'm gonna turn on automatic profile correction, and that'll eliminate the bowing and some of the chromatic aberration. And we'll go to manual mode here, 
And this painting is not exactly square. The painter actually made his own wooden frame for it. So it's a little bit off square, but we'll get it as close as we can. Uh, if we uh, look at the uh, grid that shows up automatically here, we'll see, it looks like we'll have to rotate it a bit. Like that. And it looks like we have to adjust the vertical to make the top smaller. Line that up. And that's looking pretty good. Looks pretty square. Now, not perfectly. Again, this is a handmade wooden frame. And so now I'll crop it down. I'll make two versions. One will show a little bit of the edge and it will show the color checker in it. There. So there's that one and I'll give that to the artist and that way he can, um, uh, if he wants to do his own color calibration, these uh, colors will be there so he can do that. And I'm going to make a virtual copy and then I'll recrop it down to show just the painting. Okay, so now the painting is cropped down to the exact dimensions. Just a little bit of clipping along the edges where it's not quite square. And so now the painting is ready for reproduction. So I hope that was educational and clear. Um, I'm really enjoying the x rite Color Checker Passport. Uh, I don't use it for most shoots, but for things where color is really, really important, like um, a painting, a piece of artwork, uh, it's really, really critical to use it. And um, it's actually kind of fun to see the colors coming out exactly like you see in the original. I hope if you get one that uh, this, this demonstration showed you uh, how to use it a little easier than just using the instructions. And a little announcement is that I'm working on a series of videos called, um, which will be about WordPress for photographers, a way to make a WordPress based website without doing any coding. And yet it's your own website. So I'm hoping that'll come out by the end of January. That'll probably be the next uh, video from me will be the first part of that series. So thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time.